Hey folks, Cam from Australia Carver Shop here. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the different carver preparation processes found throughout the Pacific. We're gonna be looking specifically at preparation, but it's worth noting that behind each carver preparation, there is strong custom and culture behind both the cultivation and the processing and the preparation and drinking of carver. At Australia Carver Shop, we deeply respect these customs and traditions that the various countries throughout the Pacific have brought to us and allowed us to drink carver here in Australia. Okay, let's get started with the birthplace of noble drinking carver, my old stomping ground, Vanuatu. In Vanuatu, kava is prepared in a variety of ways, each with its own significance. Let's explore some of them. In the capital city of Vanuatu, Port Vila, the majority of ways people drink kava is at kava bars. Now they're scattered throughout the capital, literally on every corner on every street. And it's thought that up to 12 tonnes of kava is processed and drunk each day. Kava is prepared using the fresh green kava root. It is cleaned, peeled, then minced. Once minced, it is then squeezed with water to make a potent brew. Now look, this is the standard way of preparing kava in the capital, Port Vila. However, once you get to the outer islands there are some very unique preparation processes let's check out a couple south of the capital tucked away on tana island we find one of the earliest traditional methods of preparing kava the chewing method young tannese boys chew the kava root and the saliva breaks down the enzymes in the kava root now the chewing method as mentioned is very strongly held in tannese custom and it's closely tied in with a custom coming of age ceremony now because of that we're not gonna show you images of that just out of respect to custom and also consent laws. I do wanna say that I have tried it and it's a particularly strong brew, but possibly not the healthiest choice. Before we wrap up on Tanner, I just wanna do a big shout out to our old custom facilitator, Koffel Lofman a very dear friend who's helped us in many ways in dealing with Tanner Carver and custom throughout the years. Good on you, Koffel, love you, mate. North of the capital on Ambai Island, another unique kava preparation technique is used. In Ambai, kava is occasionally prepared by wrapping kava root in porous coral. Using a very small amount of water, the kava root is ground using the coral and squeezed to extract the kava juice. Now look, I can speak from experience again here, the coral preparation process is by far the strongest carver brew I've ever had. And look, a big shout out to uh, Mike and the team from First Bucket Nakamal back in the day for preparing that coral carver juice for us. Now, enough about Vanuatu, let's shoot over to their neighbour Fiji and see what preparation processes they use. Fijians prepare kava using dried kava powder. The green root is dried and then pounded using hammer milk. Cam has some experience in this. Once pounded, the powdered root is mixed with water in a large bowl, known as a tanoa. Through a process of straining and filtering and squeezing, of course, kava is then ready to be enjoyed in a social occasion. Okay, let's head over to another part of the Pacific that not a lot of people are aware of. In the tiny island nation of the Federated States of Micronesia, they prepare their kava in a very unique way. They mix and blend it with hibiscus uh, parts of the plant, including the flower and the brow, like the bark of the hibiscus plant. This infusion process involves smashing kava root on a stone. They then mix it with hibiscus in water, then strain the kava in a brow of hibiscus bark. The end result is a kava brew they call Sakao, enjoyed at kava bars known as markets. Sakao was recently made famous to us here in Australia when the Australian government sent a delegation up to the Federated States of Micronesia. Whilst in Pompeii, the former interim Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, was at a meeting of key figures from both the Australian government and from the Federated States of Micronesia. When passed a shell of Sakao, he drank the lot in the same way that they do in Vanuatu and Fiji. However, the carver custom in FSM is to sip a small amount of the strong brew and then pass it on. Now, the story goes that when he got to hospital after feeling a little bit dizzy, and complaining about feeling a little nauseous, the nurse just said to him, it's okay, Mike, you just drunk on kava. Now look, a big shout out to our friends, BT and Sophie and their family who are located up in the Federated States of Micronesia currently uh, for sending through the footage and a big shout out to them. And also thank you to SBS for using the video. Now let's head over to a country in the Pacific that has a very young kava culture and that's of course Australia. Now whilst kava culture here in Australia is very young, it does have its preparation roots found in Fiji kava processes. That's because we can only import dried kava. However, 
There has been some unique twists on carbon preparation, let's delve into a couple of them. Australians have brought their creativity and innovation to the kava experience. They incorporate kava into modern applications such as mixing it with cordial, creating a hazelnut flavoured brew, French vanilla pods and experimenting with other ways to improve the taste. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the different ways kava is prepared throughout the Pacific. Now we encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel because the next episode we're going to do in this series we're going to cover Hawaii, we're going to cover Tonga, and we're also going to look at what the Americans are doing. All right, have a ripper day. We know our rich.